Hello, everybody. Hi, I'm Roberto Suarez, director of the LITC Clinic for Florida Rural Legal Services. I'm happy to be here to explain just a couple of uh, things about the child tax credit. And and we're actually um, going to talk about this, discuss it a bit very briefly, you know, very uh, uh, in, in layman's terms so you can understand a bit about it. And the, the reason why we're, we're going through this today is because Many times you will get some sort of audit or you will get a notice from the IRS. And that's when we come in to assist you with trying to resolve any issue involving uh, a tax controversy that uh, may have may have uh, uh, stemmed from uh, incorrectly applying the credits. OK, so let's start. So what is a child tax credit? It helps families with qualifying children get a tax break. You may be able to claim the credit even if you don't normally file a tax return. Now, a lot of these things uh, are more in more detail on the uh, irs.gov website. So you can go to www.irs.gov. They've got much more details. We're just going to, you know, we're just going over this so you get a general idea about it, okay? So the, so the dependent on this when you're applying for the tax credit should be a qualifying child. And we're going to discuss what a qualifying child is as it um, pertains also to a qualifying relative and what the differences are. To qualify for the full amount of the child tax credit in 2022, which is the, which we just filed in, in April of this year, you have, a, have to have a qualifying child meet all eligibility factors, have an annual income that is not more than 200,000 or 400,000 in filing a joint return. Uh, parents and guardians with higher incomes may be eligible to claim a partial credit. Now, depending on your income and family size, the tax credit is worth about $2,000 per qualifying child. Um, 1,500 of that is refundable. And the child tax credit amounts start to phase out when you make 200,000 as a head of household or 400K as a married uh, filing married jointly. And each of the $1,000 of income above the phase out level reduces your child tax credit by $50. Continuing with eligibility, you need to have more than $2,500 in earnings. Again, a qualifying child is children claimed uh, for the child tax credit must be a qualifying child. Very important, qualifying child. And, and uh, if you do your own taxes, you'll see there's a section there that assists you in determining if you do have a qualifying child. Um, a taxpayer identification number is needed. Okay, you and your spouse and or your spouse, if you're filing, married filing jointly, need to have a social security number or a uh, individual taxpayer identification number. So what are the rules for qualifying child? We can go through these right now, all right? Be under 17 at the end of the year, be your son, daughter, stepchild, and eligible foster child, brother, sister, stepbrother stepsister, half-brother, half-sister, or a descendant. Provide no more than half of their own financial support during the year. Have lived with you for more than half the year. Be properly claimed as you're dependent on your tax return. Not file a joint return with their spouse. And they're talking about now the, uh, the person you're, you're, you're uh, claiming for the tax year on file or or file it on only to claim a refund of withheld income tax. And of course, you have to be a U.S. citizen or a U.S. resident, the, uh, the child. Much more rules in depth are on this form. If you, you, can, you can actually uh, get this form again from the IRS website. It's form 886-HEIC for earned income credit. Now, these rules, although this is uh, referring to the uh, earned income tax credit, there are the rules there for the qualifying child. Many times you you'll see that 
you'll see this form as well sometimes and when when you get the audit it's included with the packet but not always but you can always download it or view it on the on the IRS portal now a qualifying relative okay this is a person who meets the IRS requirements to be a dependent for tax purposes so you're claiming this person on, on the first page of 1040 if someone is your qualifying relative, then you can claim them as a dependent. Okay, again, on, on that section where it says dependents on the first page of the uh, 1040. Depending on the type of relationship, a qualifying relative may also be a qualifying child for purposes of the child tax credit. Now, even though it's called a qualifying relative, Okay, the person being claimed does not have to be related to you. A qualifying relative must be either related to you or must live with you all year round as a member of your household. Okay, qualifying relatives can be dependents of any age, including those who are 18 or older. So as long as they live, they're living with you in your household, you can claim them as a as a as a dependent. Uh, you know, if they're a qualifying relative. A qualifying relative must have a valid social security number or an ITIN, again, the taxpayer ID number. And you must generally provide more than half of, of the qualifying relative's total support during the calendar year. So, you know, you're claiming them as dependent because you are supporting them. Okay. And they, they live with you. They must, they can't, you know, they can have their own, their own address. They must live with you. So these are the uh, criteria, like who is a qualifying relative? Very similar, some of them to the qualifying child. Again, your child, stepchild, foster child, or a descendant of any of them. Your brother, your sister, half-brother, half-sister, step-brother. Your father, your mother, grandparents. Stepfather or stepmother. Son or daughter of your brother or sister. Son or daughter of your half-brother or sister. So, you know, we go down the list, it's pretty much anybody who lives in your household that you're claiming because you're supporting them and they're living with you. So why are we talking about this? Why is this important? Okay, um, we've had many cases, especially um, starting around 2019, 2020, the IRS, um, for whatever, for whatever reason, was uh, was allowing a lot of these um, qualifying relatives for purposes of child tax credit. And then um, around 2020, 2021, many taxpayers started receiving these audits, requesting that money back because they, uh, after you know reviewing them, after doing through going through their audit, the IRS determined that the person that was claimed was actually not a qualifying child, so they had to return all or some of that some of that refund they received as a result of uh the children that had qual they had they had um um claimed as a qualifying child and so the, receive the audit do not put the audit away it's not going to go away uh if you don't respond to that audit and what will happen is you re you receive a, eventually receive a notice now with with what the calculations of the what the irs calculated which is not always correct okay that's why it's important to contact a, uh, uh, a tax professional, a low-income tax clinic like ourselves, so we can review and determine whether or not the calculations that the IRS have, have uh, uh, done are correct. Or if you forgot, maybe to provide some type of uh, documentation to substantiate your qualifying child claim. So a couple of examples. And these are a couple. We had several. Um, many of, of the I, I took out these two because these are the, most, the ones that we received um, most of during uh, 2020, 2021, and some in 2022. Taxpayer, for example, lives with his fiance, and they have uh, a couple of children between them. Well, in this case, they had one biological son, but the fiance had a uh, a child from a previous relationship. So. This this couple lived together. We're not married, and the uh, the tax the taxpayer had been claiming um, 
his fiance's child of I think for the two previous years and had received the uh the uh the money for the from the child tax credit and so um the re he received the audit he had a return significant amount of money and he called us all right now the issue with the audit is the irs likes to view what i call real-time uh documentation so for children for example that are of school age and in this case, they denied both children, even though one was the taxpayer's biological son, so that that child would have qualified as a qualifying child, all right? Uh, whereas the fiance's uh, child would not have qualified for qualif as a qualifying child when the taxpayer filed that tax return. So uh, the IRS overlooked, that it, well, didn't have the information, so we had to submit, you know, birth records, and documentation to show that the child was actually living with the taxpayer. Okay, and so going back to um, uh, getting school records, the IRS would not accept school records that were dated for that year that the audit was made, but they're going back in time, right? So they want, they want records that are dated back, in this case, I think it was 2019. So they wanna see records from 2019. Um, the IRS wouldn't even accept a letter that was dated for example, I think it was 2021, stating, yeah, child was in the school in this county in 2019. The IRS actually wanted school records from 2019. So we had to go back, request records from the school, let them go. And so the, the main thing is keep your records. If you get anything from the school for relating to your kids and you're, you're claiming a child tax credit, please try to maintain those records. I keep my records for like seven years. Um, you never know when the IRS will go back and try to audit you, and at least you have those real-time accurate records with you, okay? Uh, so in this case, after we submitted the, the uh, documentation child, you know, the uh, um, uh, birth certificate, school records to, to show that the child was living with the family, like for example, in this case, we, the, the child was on a lease, so the child was with the, was with the family, with, with the couple, went to school in that same county, and then we provided records to, to substantiate that the uh, taxpayer was supporting them, you know, more than for the half the year, and as well as living with them for more than half the year. So with all that said, the audit was revised. You know, we, we uh, submitted reconsideration request, and the one child was claimed as a relative. The other one was it was a qualifying child, and so in this case, the taxpayer did not have to pay all of the money that the IRS is claiming had to be sent back to them. It was substantially less. So the, the taxpayer was able to keep a significant amount of money. Now, the other case was um, a grandfather, and I believe he was from Haiti, I believe. He claimed his grandchild who lived with him from January to April, then left to go back to Haiti. And so in this case, the child did not live with with him for you know for for the time that was that you need to be to be eligible for for child tax credit purposes, and he also could not substantiate records that uh, he had supported the child, and so there was not um, he didn't have he, the child was not considered eligible at that time for those reasons. If the child would have been living with them, it would have probably been a different story, but the child left after four months, came back in November, I think, for just a couple of weeks and went back. So be careful. You know, you keep accurate records when you're claiming children, especially for child tax credit purposes, because the IRS will, can come back after a couple of years, several years, and go back and then uh, uh, audit you. Keep receipts. Keep receipts. So I, I kind of went back, went through this already. Taxpayer in the, in the first case received a refund in 2019, but was later audited. Taxpayer had to show proof of residence, support, proof of uh, head of household, and then received a child tax credit for the biological son. Now, in that, in that instance, uh, if he had legally adopted the, uh, the other child, then it would be a different story.
And most importantly, again, keep those receipts because the IRS will want real, what I call real time receipts from those, from the actual year that you filed. So in this case, since it was a tax return for, uh, from 2019, the taxpayer would be expected to provide uh, documentation, you know, going back 2019. Okay. These are school records, uh, bank records, a lease from that time. So, oh, another thing for this, actually for this taxpayer, he was a barber. So uh, he had, he had, uh, um, uh, he had to provide, because everything was cash. So he had to provide all those receipts. He had to go back to his employer and get all the receipts for 2019 to show his, his income. They wanted to see everything. So if you are a, a person like an independent contractor, please keep all your receipts, all of your, all your payments in the event you are audited. So the results of the grandfather, um, the Haitian grandfather, he had to repay some of the refund. For those reasons explained before, no, he had no proof of support or, or residency either. Um, and if he did, he had no receipts and he, he actually didn't know where to find them. Um, so very important to keep those receipts. Like I said, again, I keep them for seven years. Any questions, my contact information. And when in doubt, call us. We will uh, review the audit in depth with our tax professionals here, and we will provide our analysis. And for the next event, we're going to go over another type of, uh, of tax relief, the offer and compromise, as well as uh, what we call currently not collectible. So stay tuned for that for next week. Again, anyone have any questions? I'm standing by here for a little bit. I'm going once, twice. All right. Okay, everyone, thank you for joining me today. Uh, we will be here again next week. Thank you again. Okay, my name is Roberto Suarez. My number is there, 239-334-4554, extension 4118. Oh, Attorney Suarez, I oh, just want to check. Yes. I'm sorry. I just wanted to check on Facebook to see if we had any questions. Can sure. you just stand by for one second, please? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay, so I do not see any questions, but I just wanted to just reiterate that if there is a problem relating to uh, an issue tax tax related with child income credit, child income anything for verification for dependencies and anything, if it's a situation where the person does not respond, what is the what how can they be penalized i just wanted to make sure that people are aware of ramifications for not responding sure so 
you'll get like an audit, you know, and it'll be several forms and you, and those, that audit will have a date there. You know, um, the IRS generally makes their own calculation saying, you know, this is how much actually you should have claimed. And this is how much is, is, uh, is now being, um, you know, uh, requested to be, to be returned back because they were maybe overpaid or maybe part of the refund was withheld. So they're explaining to them what's going on. And there's a, there's a, a deadline date to respond. If they if it goes by past that deadline date, then what will happen is the IRS will just uh, use their calculations and they'll receive a notice after that with the amount that they that they owe. Um, so it's important to, you know, not, you know, disregard that notice. It's important to, you know, call right away and let them know, look, I'm, I'm seeking uh, um, assistance from an, from an attorney. I'm going to low income tax, you know, income tax clinic to get an assessment. So perhaps get some more time. You know, you can really usually usually ask. I usually ask for you know when I call about sixty days, a little more more time to um, reply to that audit. And sometimes when the you know when the taxpayer comes and it's past the deadline, we can always make a request for reconsideration. And and many times the IRS allows that. And if they do not respond or it's past the deadline, are they penalized with interest or additional fees or any kind of compoundedness of the fees? Yeah, I mean, uh, as soon as you have that that debt, the uh, uh, penalties and interest will continue to accrue for the life of the debt. Correct. And I'm not sure if everybody knows, but is there any way to get away from own taxes? Like, can you file bankruptcy? Can you, if you have Social Security, like, how is there any way to get that removed or stop? To get what removed? I'm sorry, to get what removed? If the payment, so if you owe the IRS, is there a way that you can get it wiped off without paying? Oh, oh so sure. So um, in the event that you have a tax debt that uh, the taxpayer cannot pay, and so after we reviewed it, perhaps they didn't they didn't have the qualifying child and they weren't eligible, and so the the um, amount the penalty owed stands. In that case, we can assess them for. Another type of relief, either you know, offering compromise. If they don't uh, are are not eligible for that, we can do an installment agreement. So yeah, there are there are um, there is relief if you cannot pay that tax debt. And I think we have um, Attorney Krista Page um, wanted to say something, but I don't. Do you, can you hear? I, I, my my mic is for some reason I can hear you, but I can't hear anybody else. Yeah, Krista, we can't hear you. I, you're not coming across. I don't know if your volume is muted or. But if you, if we can see you trying to talk. Can you? You want to type it in the chat? Your question, rule, your comment. So another question, if you're ever in doubt as to if there's a miscalculation or uh, sometime even with an audit, they could be completely wrong or they could have gotten it wrong. Um, is it adjustable if they just got it wrong and you could just write them yourselves or would you prefer, would it be better just to contact an attorney? Well, taxpayers a lot of times do respond and that's good that they respond, but um, sometimes they don't have all of the uh, documentation being requested. For example, the one that I just uh, commented on, um, <clears throat> the taxpayer did respond and provided a, a birth certificate, but the IRS wanted, you know, school records and, and other things that the, that the taxpayer was not aware of. So um, he contacted us and we were able to provide just the IRS a complete package. And I'm seeing here uh, attorney Krista Page saying that taxpayers can also be barred from claiming the credit for years in the future. That's correct. Yes, yes. If they if they make a, a claim like that, correct. They also get additional and significant accuracy related penalties in addition to other penalties. And and also um, that reminds me. So if you have been barred, I think there's a form you can file requesting to you know be reinstated from that bar. Um, but yes, um, that is very good. Good point. Thank you, Krista. So with being barred, you, you're no longer, because some people might not understand what barred means. Yeah, so, right. Mm -hmm. So, so they are not, okay. Yeah, um, so if they claim the child tax credit, right, and, for, and, and they don't qualify, 
they will be prevented. They won't be able to do it the following tax year. And um, it might be more than just one tax year, actually. So they would have to have a good reason why, you know, if they want to be reinstated, and there's a form for that, which we can talk about on, on the next, uh, we can add that to within the next event as well. So, and so I just want to make clarification that our services is beyond just going to um, doing a turbo tax or going to um, any kind of tax ish, you know, related places, our services afterwards. So some people, if you do have tax related issues, it's probably not best to go to a tax preparer you know, company or organize, you know, it's best at this point, if you have an audit to come to an attorney. Right. And, and, and matter of fact, the, uh, the many, I want to say probably over 50% of our, our clients do go to tax repairs and add these children. Uh, and so, uh, you know, <laughs> come to us, we'll, we'll assess, you know, it's part of our, that's part of what we do. You know, when, when you have a tax controversy, a tax debt, we will go back and review your, your uh, tax returns, especially the one that's, that's at issue to determine, you know, what happened. And many times it's just something that the tax preparer may have overlooked. Perhaps the, uh, the taxpayer provided wrong information. Um, you know, who, who knows the reason, but we will make a, a uh, an accurate um, assessment to determine what should actually be claimed and then respond accordingly to the IRS. Yeah, so just because you've received the funding or you receive, you were approved, because I know sometimes when you go to a tax preparer, your taxes are approved, your children, you know, they're sending you this money, direct deposit, but sometimes it just doesn't end there. Like there is a audit review that could occur. I, you know, even though some people, I think that people have had, they've done it for years. And just this one time, this one year, they were audited or something flagged. And now, you know, they're going back. You know, how yeah. many years can they go back if they catch something? Good question. <laughs> uh, the, IR, the IRS can go back. Oh, my gosh. Now you caught me, caught me off here. Just wanted to know if there's a limit. Like, they can't, you know, if you have an 18-year-old and you've been doing it for 18 years, can they go all the way back? Well, no. Well, the, the, a debt a debt actually ends um, when you have a debt. There's a there's, we're going to talk about that usually. But yes, go back. They can go back as far back if they think you've missed something in the audit. But know that if you do have a notice, right, and you have a tax debt, once they've done that assessment, that tax debt has a statutory period, so um, they can collect for only up to ten years. But they can go back. As far back. I mean, I've, I've seen taxpayer go back uh, 10 years that they have a taxpayer that has a 2013 debt right now. So with that said, I mean, they can go back as far as 10 years from what I've seen in my experience. Yeah. Oh, so it's probably best if you are audited to seek an attorney. Right. I mean, I mean if, you, if you wait that 2013 audit that has been there, you know, that you receive. Or just to go back and includes those penalties and interest. So yes, do not, do not avoid it. It's going to be there, and it'll continue pounding interest and penalties. And so we we'll probably talk around in the next, the next video or one, one of the following videos, like how to get rid of, like, you know, if you are, if you have avoided it, your 2013 audit, and you know what to do basically to help with the interest and how to you know to move along yes and we'll we'll discuss that uh um as well as actually the next thing when it discuss the uh, uh collection collection statute expiration date we're going to touch on that so taxpayers know that you know the irs can once you once you've been assessed and have that no, that notice of that um uh, of uh debt that you owe to the irs um, they cannot collect beyond 10 years. It's a 10-year statute of limitations. All right. So thank you, Attorney Suarez, Attorney Page, so much. Um, this was an awesome, awesome um, presentation. And I'm sure that a lot of people, 
you know, especially if they feel like, well, I've always gotten away with it. Like they've never said anything to me before. And now all of a sudden, you know, and so, yeah. So the best thing to do is to get the next session will be great. So people who are in that situation and circumstance, how to get some kind of relief um, if they, if it had incurred interest and in going all the way back. So, but thank you so much, you guys. You, it's been a great presentation. I do not see any other questions out there. I've checked our Facebook. Um, and no, I do have a question. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we do have a question on Facebook. I'm sorry. This popped up from Vanessa. Can dependents be removed retroactively for purposes of strategy if they were wrongly added, say, after a reconsideration? Well, yeah, if in an audit, if there's been something that was not supposed to be added, we can amend the return. So we can amend the return depending on, on what the actual situation is. But yes, we review it. And if a child should not have been claimed, we amend it, especially if there's if there's uh, um, other things in the return that we that could have been claimed and somehow the taxpayer uh, did not claim it, the preparer didn't see it. So once we do the assessment for the tax return, um, we, we amend it if, if need be. So yes. Okay. And that process is generally simple or did that require additional documentation from the taxpayer, some type of proof or? It could, it could yes, depending on the type of amendment, yes. Um, and that's why it's important to have, you know, a, something like a low income tax clinic look at it because we have uh, people who review it carefully uh, to determine what documentation is needed to substantiate whatever credit they may have missed or being claimed now. So yes. Don't try to, any, yeah, I'm sorry. I was, was going to say, don't any, try it on your own because our services are free. <laughs> okay. That's what I wanted to find out. Is there, and under any circumstances where the IRS will just reject it and said, no, we're not going to accept it? Um, there could be, yeah. I mean, uh, um, the one case, of, well, several cases now, but uh, that one case specifically, that was kind of like one of the first ones that we'd come into um, assisting this taxpayer was what I was talking about, real-time receipts. You know, we had we had submitted documentation that we had received, you know, during that year, not the tax year at issue, but the year that the uh, client received the audit, which was like a couple of years later. And so the IRS was rejecting it. Yeah, I said, no, you know, we're not taking this. We, we want records from the tax year at issue. Oh, so that's okay. why, you know, at the bottom of my slides, I kept saying, keep your receipts because it's so important, you know, just do a file, put your, uh, you know, put a, the tax year, then put all your documentation from that tax year. So you, you keep it in case, in the event you get audited, you can just pull it out and you don't have to be, you know, scratching back to look back to, uh, to find those receipts or those invoices that are relevant to that tax year. Yeah, I might even go a little bit further than saying put it up receipts because somehow receipts easily fade away. Like the print, the ink, I don't know what it is nowadays, but the receipts right. have been fading away. <laughs> I say probably take a picture. <laughs> if it's possible, yeah, take yeah. a picture or scan it or, or something copy, yes, like that. Yes. Because receipts from a month ago, for me, they, they just disappear. They you're end. right. They fade away, right? <laughs> yes, you're right about that. Good point. I'm going to check to see again in um, Facebook to see if we have any other questions. Please hold on. Sure, yeah. Okay, so Vanessa said thank you. She understands. So um, thank you for that explanation. I don't see any other questions in the chat on Facebook or anything. So I think that we are good. And this has been a great presentation. And I'm sure that everyone is looking forward to next session, the next presentation, to find out if we do find ourselves in this situation where we owe and we have interest. How this, you know, how can we kind of get out of it? That's what we want to do. Okay. Not pay. <laughs> so we look forward to the next presentation and we'll be back again on Friday. Yes. At 11 a.m. Same bad time, same bad channel. Amen. All, yep. right. <laughs> All right. You guys have a great weekend. All right. Bye -bye. All right. Bye-bye.